This is David, and this is Angie. Hello. <laughs> so good to see you oh, in good person. To, good to see you, and, and finally, great to meet you in person. You too. do. Yeah. It's funny how YouTube works. Like you feel yeah. you know a person, and then yeah. sometimes you get to meet a person, and it's true. You know them. Yeah. You're exactly. as nice as you appear in video. Yeah. There's and there's just, and friendly. There's it's just like you have all that backstory already. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you just pick up in, in real in real time. You know. Yes. <laughs> we are we are at GoodCon, For those of you who don't know, this um, week event. This is the second one in Germany, and this is a place where we get to meet other creators and yeah. a bunch of different uh, gear company. And um, I thought I'd pick your brain a little bit and get yeah. to get to know you a little better. Yeah, we were, we were talking about how the difference in the YouTubers around here. It's like I I almost don't consider myself a traditional YouTuber because I I don't I'm not like a vlogger type. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't really ever really speak my mind or anything I, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm kind of on the gear side and i'm the, the gear is speaking its mind and mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of a different so this is a really interesting approach to me because it's definitely outside of my you know comfort zone but it's great because i you know i it's it's always it's, i think good to to put more personality into videos yeah and, you know i mean um we're people and people like to talk with other people you know? I, exactly <laughs> well that's what we're gonna do here yeah um all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just throw questions that come to my mind. Yeah. My first question is, so in the hallway, there's a lot of different companies and stuff. Yeah. Why did you pick up this guitar? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, I've, like, I remember in music stores that, they, you know, I'd be checking out an amp or something like that, and they go, well, what kind of guitar do you want? I just said, anything with humbuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I could make it work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just like it. I, I think... Um, the sustain, the the lack of hum, obviously. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I like sort of a, a darker tone. Um, it's just, and, and I think that, that just what comes with humbuckers usually is a set neck, mahogany, mm -hmm. or that. I I think I just like that that uh, the warmth and sustain that comes from that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll say for me this. So this is I picked up a Harley Benton. Um, oh yeah. Toman, the music store. That's their brand. And I was talking to the guys outside, and they were having a conversation how they came up with new models uh, with uh, stainless steel frets. And so, oh wow, I'll really? try one in the video. <laughs> so, wow, um, but these are kind of lower end. Uh, yeah, no lower end in, in price. Right, but they feels great so far. Yeah, I've never played stainless steel until I got this uh, Sir that you might have seen in videos. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and that's a really cool, uh, just a uh, whole new world as far as frets go. Because like, yeah, like my you know. My dad makes guitars, so I kind of understood what goes into, you know, fret dressing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, what they're, they're super hard, right? And you can't. Right. It's like they'll last years without having mm -hmm. to do anything. That's that was amazing to me. And and to actually find that they're putting them on on affordable guitars is kind yeah. of a cool thing. Yeah, you're right. With traditional frets, it's kind of funny. Like if you play a traditional fret guitar for a long time, yeah. it kind of ages with you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you pick up the same exact model that you have a brand new one and it's like, I can't play this because oh, the right. are a little bit used. Yeah, yeah. You're so used to your own guitar. So <laughs> it's, it's an interesting uh, You can see thing. the the your favorite areas. <laughs> right, yeah, 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 usually 12th fret, yeah, yeah, fifth I'm guilty. Fret. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, cool. Let's talk about playing because I think we all have different approaches to music yeah. and um, we talked a little bit in the hallway about being self-taught. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting topic. Um, what, well, first of all, what does it mean to be self-taught? <laughs> yeah, I think that my, early on my ear was just, um, I, I, luckily I could pick up stuff. I could, mm -hmm. you know, I had an acoustic guitar laying around and um, I picked up that, um, you know, that I always say this, I picked up the Lemon Song from Zeppelin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, it just, I, I don't know, I could pick up stuff, I could do, I figured out, you know, somebody showed me how to do power chords, you mm -hmm. know, like we all kind of do. Yeah. Um, and then I started playing along to albums, and I think that was the real, that, that was really my, my you know, experience with, with uh, you know, that was my teacher, basically. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. learning, you know, suspended chords and... Um, mm -hmm. That kind of stuff, especially like the Who was one of my big influences. Yeah. So he's all about, you know, like. Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah, there was a song called uh, "Fortune Teller." Yeah. You know, that's. I mean, that's some. That's some pretty. I, I think you know, um, out of the out of the ordinary mm -hmm. guitar playings, but you know, and and the way I play, I like to I like to pick, I like to play arpeggios a lot. I'm not a big, you know, kind of. I don't gent. 
Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, you're not a gender. No, I'm not. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this brings up uh, something I discovered. I'm sure it's common knowledge. Everybody knows it. Yeah. Of course, I'm the last one to know. <laughs> I found that out because I've been watching your stuff, you know, here and there with reviews. Yeah, yeah. And uh, never noticed that you don't play with a pick. Oh yeah. Until yeah. The, you were talking about it in a video. Uh -huh. I think. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was. Um, which I find it fascinating because usually you can hear. Oh, it's some kind of attack, right? Right, yeah, but you're yeah. still doing like the, the, the blues licks and things like yeah, that. Yeah. And so, can we jam a little bit? Like, if I play something like uh, just an A, a blues. Uh huh. All the same. That's it. So you still, so that's awesome. So you're still like holding a, an invisible pick, but your pick's the finger, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're doing? Exactly. It's the side, my, my pick is the side of my thumb. Wow. I can really dig in if I Man, wanted that's to. that's so awesome. That's, it. so did this come out of frustration of not being able to use a pick or? Uh, yeah, choice, or? exactly. Yeah. I, I like the feel of just grabbing, grabbing yeah. strings and, um, yeah, I think it just it, it was just easier for me, um, and and for this it fit the style of music I was mm -hmm. interested in. That's the thing. I, I um, if I was if I was into kind of like shred and stuff, that right. would have been really frustrating. But mm -hmm. you know, like that like that Zeppelin song and, and stuff that I was the stuff I was interested in, I could I could hang. Yeah, I could hang with them. Yeah, um, and especially I learned some of these players did not use a pick, okay. like Mark Knopfler. You right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So there, I feel I actually had advantage yeah. being able to, you know, the, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, that's where he ends. That's <laughs> so cool. So, um, are you um, using three fingers or two? You know, the, the thumb is kind of, I think, the strong pick attack, but mm -hmm. then the other other guys help me, uh, especially stuff like that Knopfler. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that kind of back and forth stuff is helpful with the, the, these two fingers. Yeah. And, um, it, you do get a different sound. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not really, uh, a lot of you know, people that I watch that do play with fingers, mm -hmm. there, there is a little bit more of that. I don't right. really like to pop stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that kind of, I mean, it's good for kind of an effect, you know, like Albert Collins, you know. Yeah. Right. But, I'm not that actually is weird weird for me. Mm -hmm. I just would rather play like like uh like I wanna like a I wanna sound like somebody who has a pick. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. Um just because that's yeah, I've always strived to play like those guys. Um, you know, I grew up listening to Hendrix and stuff mm -hmm. and um so yeah, that's 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 kind of that's, my thing. <laughs> I, I like it. But there's I think there's a lesson to be learned there because um you sound great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it so if I gave you a pick well, I guess maybe you can play with the pick a little bit. Yeah, today. I can try. It's gonna it's gonna look very awkward, probably. It's you know, it's yeah. so, but it was awkward from the start, and so that's what directed you yeah. towards that. Yeah. Which is cool. It means like, um, out of uh, your frustration of not being able to do it the conventional way. Yeah. Just you still I adapt. Adapt. You know, yeah. Right. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's that's really good. I say that to my students often. Uh -huh. Like, if if you just can't nail a lick. Yeah. Maybe that's okay. Don't don't nail that lick and make yeah. it on your own, right? Right. So yeah. that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so uh, you said you learned with uh, listening to 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 records stuff yeah. like that, replicating, right? Which is very good for your ear. Yeah. Um, what's your um, what's your relationship with music theory, if any? Uh, it's, I hate it. It's, I like it. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> well, I mean, I I I know that I. I, I know that I don't know. You know, maybe mm -hmm. it's like those yeah. states who we were talking about uh, on the panel. You yeah. Know? Um, so I, I always know that, that there's that there's stuff that can be really useful, and it's just, um, you know, I, I think I need to to de develop further. I'm not, you know, I know a lot of players are happy just kind of being where they're at. Yeah. Um, it's just discipline and and mm -hmm. taking the time, but um, you know, I love listening to people. If I could get an ounce of of, you know, just take walk away with a little piece of something, mm -hmm. that's something that yeah. didn't, didn't have yesterday. Yeah. Um, I tried to keep up on, uh, you know, Victor Wooten at Nam. Yeah, you know, it was it was amazing hearing him. He was at the Reverb booth, you know. Oh, and nice. So I was yeah. right there, yeah. uh, in front, and just trying to soak up as much as I could. You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I would imagine I I do things that that I don't know that are probably you yeah know, like you know 
that are correct in yeah. theory, you know. Oh yeah, uh, yeah you know, yeah. just because of of being able to replicate others and and certain styles, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I I don't know. I know a lot of players who who just like, oh, I don't I don't want to do any theory. I just want to play what sounds right. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's probably theory in you know, it sounds right because it's a Right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it needs to be like a symbiosis, if that's the right word. Mm -hmm. I make up words all the time. Um, a, a real blend of both worlds. Yeah. Like, theory can help your ear, but, but yeah, hearing first and, and knowing what sounds right to you is right. so important. And right. So many players get caught up into the, some players get caught up into the scales and all that, whereas yeah. that doesn't necessarily produce good music. It can explain things. But. Right, right. Yeah, the scales... Um, yeah, what, like back in that you know, first year, learning learning some of the scales, I it was uh, as soon as I kind of learned a few, and they're like, okay, now write a write a solo using those yeah. those scales. You kind of just are you feel almost like you're you're you, you know, you're, you're compromised. You can't mm -hmm. like step out, you know. So that maybe kind of got me like thinking, oh man, I, I'm just gonna do it my own way. And, yeah, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know that you know there's 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 nothing wrong with 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 education. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so you've you've played through I don't know, countless pedals. Yeah. <laughs> pieces of gear, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, ha do you think uh, getting playing with so many pedals has that affected your playing at all? Do you think? Uh, let's see. You know, yeah. It's you know. It, Everyone starts kind of like with an overdrive, and they get familiar with those. Right. So those those maybe really didn't change my playing, but yeah, uh, recently, um, you know, some of the uh, video game sounds are really oh, yeah, coming yeah. into play. You know, you see a lot more bit crushers, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think it is people are a little bit more sentimental about the '80s these days too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe it's because people that grew up in the '80s are now are are at a position where they're producing products that they like because that's yeah. what they grew up with. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, those certainly help uh, me break out of a box, and they kind of are like, oh, this sounds like Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to learn that, and then you learn some things from, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, well, I, I can't play the Super Mario Brothers theme, but I've looked it up, and it's mm -hmm. like that's amazing. And there's like, there's a lot of it's it's not just a a simple <laughs> chord progression. It's all yeah. over the place, you know? And yep. if I could sweep pick, you know, that would, that would I, I'd have to do that to replicate one of those. Right. Um, but yeah, other pedals that they really bring out um, different styles of music mm -hmm. that I never was really into. Um, alternate tunings, yeah. you know, especially if I, if I have like a, um, a shoegazer pedal or something like that, then you know, I look up some of these, these alternate tunings where there's like, you know, just drone strings, mm -hmm. you know? I, I knew the open G and, um, you know, dad gad kind of stuff. Right. But some of these, like Sonic Youth, it's like, uh, you know, all G except for, you know, a couple of other, yeah. other ones. Um, so, yeah, I think the, that really does, uh, that's that's the gear's mm -hmm. fault. Uh, you're not fault, but, right. you know, that's the... Um, it's got a direct impact on right. on your inspiration, therefore uh, you're Absolutely, playing. and if I hadn't have, yeah, if I hadn't have demoed that, I wouldn't have gone and picked up that, that bit of information. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's... Yeah, so it, it, even if you just experiment, you know, you don't have to have a huge pedal collection, but um, it certainly opens up a different world. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't make you a better player, but they right. certainly, you know, they they uh, spark something in your brain. Yeah, you know? definitely. No, that so, makes sense. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, that spark, uh -huh. so here's a scenario. You are okay. sitting in, I don't know, a guitar store, whatever. You pick in a guitar for the first time. Uh, what is your to-go thing to... What, what would you play naturally? Oh, okay, you know? yeah. What kind of thing? I think, well, I don't know. I think for any rock guitar player, it's... <laughs> yeah. You know, that, there's, so many, there's so many great riffs, you know. Um, pretty much every ACDC, you know. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, or just um, you know, even rock and roll, Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know I was gonna play another AC/DC song. Yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. some classic stuff. But um, I think you know, if I'm if I'm testing out like the bass response of of mm -hmm. an amp or a pedal, I 
I always like to kind of neck neck pick up and then just get, yeah. get kind of like the stonesy kind of. And that just covers the wide range of you know tones. I'll be able to tell right there if the speaker's going to flub, yeah. flub out. And yeah, that's um, good. So that's good. I kind of gravitate around um, lately, um, like the, like this. I call it the magic shape. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like um, the first three strings. It's kind of like a reverse bar chord. Chords. For example, you got uh, on the third string, fifth fret, and then you do a bar here on, or sorry, uh, third string, fifth fret, mm -hmm. and a bar on the um, these. Uh, Oh right. yeah. So that shape, and then this shape, movable, obviously. But I'm gonna kill the delay here too. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of. Um, let's see. Real quick. Delay level. Right, and it works with uh, with basses in A and E all the time, no matter what. Oh wow. It always will work, and and it makes you sound smarter than you oh, are. Oh, right? wow, I'm using that, yeah. <laughs> I always do something like that, and then I, and that kind of opened new doors, like, yeah. uh, all right, I've got, oh, okay, and then I search around, you know? Sometimes I mess up the notes, but, but yeah. that kind of teaches a lot of things, but it's, it's weird, like this, this shape, like, <laughs> you know? Wow, so is there, what would you call that? I mean, is that, is that a, I mean, well, so uh, this, it depends how you look at it, yeah. right? Because it depends what you consider, consider the root. But if you consider that lowest note without talking about the bass, the root, you have some kind of suspended chord type thing. Suspended, okay. Um, but then the root will change everything. Right. And then if, I don't think in terms of, all right, this is a B dominant, whatever it yeah, is, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I know that these are magical. <laughs> <laughs> always works. It is and magical. Then, and the cool thing is, um, it will work with any bass too. Wow. Always works. I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's a go, but now everybody's going to do it. And it's like, oh, we've got to find something else. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily help me decide if this amp is good or not. Sure. Like yeah, I, yeah. You know? But, uh, but it's fun. It's yeah. It, it, it immediately gives you, you know, you're more distinguished than you were. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then because you know you can use this uh, low E mm -hmm. all the time, that means that you can also use the high E. So this chord could become. Okay. This. Oh yeah. It's what like, if I keep? What if I do some different stuff all over that? Oh. Well. <laughs> that's fun yeah that's great that's a good trick um yeah i think it's i've been in a like kind of like a, a change of mind like i i've been thinking theory teaching for so long uh -huh. and stuff like that and trying to find things where i don't think about theory and oh rediscovering yeah. a little bit yeah you know? yeah more of a an adventure on the fretboard type of thing it's, it's I, fun i think that's a good approach you know kind of sneak theory in and, and yeah. make it seem like it's um, like Divinity, Divinity Rocks was, was talking about that, you know, mm -hmm. just make sure, that, you know, it, it's supposed to be fun, remind right. you that it, this is music and we love it. Yeah. And it's not a, it's not a chore. chore yeah, um, exactly. Yes. Um, so. Always things to discover. Um, what's, maybe that doesn't exist, but is there a typical Andy day, work day, mm -hmm. does that exist? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think right now, especially uh, with the consistency of reverb and, yeah. and uh, you know, the, the scheduling it didn't yeah scheduling before uh was was always just kind of play whatever pedal came in the door at the warehouse um mm -hmm. but but uh now it's it's a whole lot more organized and we have a great team i'm working with so yeah the, it's really kind of shoot uh sh shoot the pedal in the morning and mm -hmm. edit at this or you know edit the second half of the day and okay then, um i take the pictures uh, of the you know different angles of the pedal make sure i show you know little mini pots and you know yeah sometimes open up the pedal and, and show those things that are um and then yeah it's just um uh a couple you know maybe a day and a half of of doing that you know okay. a, a lot of it is prep you know because 
these songs that come out when I play the pedal, I then have to learn them. Right. You know, so that comes into pre-production. So yeah, pre-production is like you know making sure that uh, we have a good script, you know, mm -hmm. to to kind of cover all the bases, and then if I if I want to do a backing track. That's oh yeah, that's a, that's another couple hours right there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's something I only did start, kind of recently, maybe in the last five six years. Okay. Um, out of the ten, I guess. Uh, yeah. Halfway. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's actually been a lot of fun. Just um, whether it's a cover or just I I have this jam that came out of this fuzz pedal, but mm -hmm. I really want to make it. I really want to show the power of yeah. you know, of, the, of the fuzz. So then sometimes. The best way to do that is just to put it in context. So mm -hmm. just to lay down a c easy bass line with it, and you know, yeah. I like playing bass a lot. Actually, I okay. Mean, I started like when I was playing. Uh, I had a drummer friend, but we didn't have a bass player, so I'd get my four track, mm -hmm. and um, that was actually kind of a cool lesson because you, it's a whole different approach. You know, with bass, it's just mm -hmm. you don't just play the same thing as the guitar. And I, I know a lot of guitar players kind of. We'll instantly do that. I'm like, yeah. oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know, switch your brain and, and right. just feel the, you know, listen to that bass drum and, um, and, and try to lock in. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that still I learned from listening to those live albums, especially um, Zeppelin, you know, mm -hmm. John Paul Jones and, and Bonham were just in, in sync the whole time. Not yeah. exactly always playing the, the, you know, the same notes on mm -hmm. the same, at the same point in time, but it's all the, the groove that just locked yeah. in. Yeah, it's a rhythm, so important. Right. Um, creative stuff, do you, do you still have, do you, do you have time these days to do like write your own music or yeah. do, do stuff like that? Well, yeah, a lot of the ideas uh, I've been kind of hanging on to, um, I mean, you know, it's not all covers, like I said, so mm -hmm. like there's a, there's a song in, um, and uh, like one of these, uh, I think it was a Digitech delay video that I've always wanted to, because uh, I started with this idea, mm -hmm. uh, and it'll always be like a minute, minute twenty yeah. to, at the in, in, introduction of the demo, and I was like, mm -hmm. all right, that's one to remember. I want to like, you know, and that's what's great about it. I have it preserved, and I can right. go back as long as I remember which video it was. Yeah. Um, so that's. I feel like I am getting my creative side out there, mm -hmm. and people are like, oh, you should write your own music. Well. I am pretty much yeah. daily. Yeah, um, so I, that I feel like I um, there's nothing lacking in, mm -hmm. in that you know creative department. But obviously, I would love to you know I start start producing my own um, you know songs and put yeah. them on iTunes and yeah. stuff. I think I think it's about time. And I think you know there's been some demand, so I mm -hmm. I can't ignore that. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, great. Um, that's what I had for you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, David. Yeah, thanks so much. Look forward to talking more in the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, check out this guy's channel. I'll leave all the links below. And uh, Andy, safe travels home. Oh, thanks so much. And we'll keep in touch now. Yeah, now absolutely. Friends. Yeah, no. <laughs> thanks great. so much, man. All right. Thank you. Bye.